Aloha guys, Justin here with yet another episode of Fish and Dive Hawaii where we give you all the best fishing diving tips here in the Aloha State and this is the episode that you guys have been waiting for for a couple weeks probably now which is the 1000 subscriber giveaway so go ahead click the link in the description make sure you guys read the rules of entry international entrants are now allowed to enter our giveaways I know we didn't do that in the past and we have a lot of international subscribers here so I just want to thank all you guys for all your support and helping us reach 1000 subscribers here on this channel thank you guys a lot so today we are actually fishing at Waimea Bay here on the North Shore where I'm from this is a school of Halalu which are scad Halalu being the juvenile scad Akule being the adult version in the last episode I showed you guys how to tie the specific rig to catch these fish so you guys can see the school of them right there they're in the dark areas and a lot of predators come in and whack these fish so we take bigger allure poles or bigger dunking poles and we swim out some live bait so uh, let's see what we can catch in today's awesome action-packed episode so now that we've successfully learned how to tie a hollow rig all that's left to do is test it out at the beach right now still via my man bay beach park sun just woke up so it's a little family mission i got all the poles in the back of my car right now so we're gonna go down to the beach hopefully catch some halalu akule and see what else we can get i'm gonna be throwing out some live bait and i'll show you guys how i'm gonna do that and then see if we can catch any set everything up at the beach so we'll take this that we pre-tied already through here all the way just like that so we're gonna try the Campania lures blood worm First one on the day. Second one of the day, second pass. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh snag. That tail snag. <laughs> Try this one, yeah. All right, grab. Get some live bait action going over here. Pick the liveliest one. You can see right here, they're all kind of dying a little bit. Go through that tail, tail hook. Like that. Should be good to go. Yeah. Wow. 
one. Action, this one. So far, every cast. Huh? I never miss one cast yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's off his blood worms. This is all off his blood worms. Ah, first one then this. Oh, swallowed. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. oh. Ah, you're right. Yeah, he did it. <laughs> I don't like those. Thanks, huh? Oh, you're a little bit of everything. Or you can be lies. Stop, Keith. I knew it was you. <laughs> oh. Bro. I know. <laughs> Running hard still. Stingray. Huh? Shark. I don't know. Stingray, probably. Look like ya. Oh, burn me off for nothing. Huh? It's a workout right now.
Beautiful workout. Bra. Stingray. <laughs> I was about to get um, gonna get crocodile hunter right there. This uh, rod is bait is action. He's a monster. Like no, like one one two. One one. No, you don't need to pull it up that much. Just go one and just a little jerk. Yeah, like that. Perfect. Only two, two, two. Yes, sir. <laughs> For real. <laughs> Bro. I swear this guy gets a touch. What was, what was your lure? 87? 86? Huh? Oh, cool day right here. Solid one. Oh, splashy, splashy. Also got, oh, Opelu right here. One eternity later. All right, so we're going to be cleaning the fish that we caught the other day. And this is going to be a doozy because this is a lot of fish. So let's go ahead and count exactly how much fish we ended up catching. So this is 84 Halalu exactly and again we've used some of these for bait and um, we swam it out with our poles. My cousin caught a kava kava and we lost about four or five and so uh, my GoPro died right around late morning so most of these fish I didn't get on video but as you guys could see earlier the bite was awesome that day. So let's clean these right here before we get them ready to cook. I'm actually going to be giving a lot of these to my neighbor who's going to go to the mainland. I don't catch all of this for nothing. I use it for bait. I eat it especially this akule right here. This is going to be awesome fried and the rest of it I give to friends and family. All we have to do is take off these little micro scales and just cut open right here and take all the guts out and stuff. This is a really clean fish, meaning that it's not gonna smell really bad, but make sure you do have proper sanitary stuff. My wife actually opened up all my windows and lit up some candles because I told her I was cleaning fish. So 95% of this fish was caught with these blood worms made by Campania Lures. Um, these are the holographic jade ones, I believe. And um, I also picked up some gold ones for when I go next week. And uh, this is a one actually the owner of Campani Lures was using that day. And so both of these work really, really well with Akule or um, Halalu. And you can also pick up these green strips at any Target, Walmart. So one thing I wanted to point out is the difference between Halalu and Akule. Now they both are considered scad. One of them's a juvenile and one of them's an adult. So let me pull out some Halalu right here. As you can see, they're very small, maybe the size of my hand. Now this is an Akule, this is the adult version. And you can see just how big of a difference is it. It is the eye is much bigger, uh, twice the size. The colors are more prominent on this one. So Akule, Halalu, both are scat. Right, so I got my handy dandy pen knife set. I'm gonna be using the smallest one. And this actually might be a little bit dangerous. 
I do not have a paring knife. Um, I think my, we threw it away when we moved. Um, but a paring knife would be perfect for these smaller fish. I'm just going to pin it up on here and then just cut it down the middle. So let's go ahead and start doing that. So again, just down right here. Cut through right here. Just going to open it up and take all that stuff out. Again, I'm going to cut down the middle right here. Get a little spoon. Take all the scales off. And these scales are really fine. I mean, I don't think you really need to take the scales off, but it will be kind of bothersome when you're eating it if you don't take them off. And it's really simple. If you guys watch my other catch and cook videos, the uhus are really hard to take the scales off. This is real simple just because you can see just how small it is right there. All right, so let's finish cleaning the rest of this fish. Finally cleaned everything right here. If you guys aren't willing to clean the fish, don't catch them because that right there was a lot of hard work. I was able to clean everything. I'm gonna be saving these smaller ones for bait when I go again on Tuesday. And I'm just gonna cut these up and use that to catch some Owama, which is a whole nother episode. So I'm just gonna put away all these guts right now, wash it up, and then we're good to go. All right, so I'm just gonna bag these up and then let's go ahead and cook them tomorrow. So we are back in the kitchen today. We're gonna to go ahead and fry this fish up. So I'm just gonna show you real quick how I like to prepare some halaloo. So let's go over all the ingredients that you're gonna need, starting off with the fish, of course. All the seasonings that you'll use. I like to use Hawaiian salt. I highly suggest you guys use some Hawaiian salt or just any type of sea salt that you can find. I got some garlic salt because I really love garlic flavor. And then I've also got some pepper. So really simple, nothing too crazy. Again, so the fish, all the seasoning, you're gonna need a pan to fry the fish up in, and then some oil. I really like using um, olive oil, but you can use canola oil, um, whatever, whatever suits you. And then you're gonna need some eggs as well. So the reason why you're gonna need some eggs is because we're actually gonna be battering them with some Japanese bread um, crumbs or panko as we like to call it. So you don't have to get a really big bag. You'll find this at, in your Asian. Um, side of the market or if you live in Hawaii they sell this in Sam's Club, Costco and it's really cheap if you buy it by the bulk because you will go through the small bags really fast. The first thing that we're going to want to do is cut some slits down the sides of the fish. Um, two to three cuts is perfect. Now this doesn't make too much of a difference if you guys are going to be ponko the fish and this is really what you guys want to do if you're going to be cooking any type of fish whole is just cut some slits in it so it cooks the meat more evenly. As you can see, I did it on both sides already. Let's go ahead and season it up. I'm gonna start off with this garlic salt and just give a little sprinkle over. And I'm gonna sprinkle everything on one side first. So the pepper, garlic salt, and then the Hawaiian salt right here. Let's go ahead and grab some of that. Just sprinkle it over. That makes a big difference if you're gonna be using Hawaiian salt versus any type of regular salt or sea salt versus like your standard Morton salt. It does make the fish taste way better if you guys are using quality sea salt like this one here. So let's go ahead and flip the fish over, season it on the other side as well. All right, so now let's prepare the panko mix. So the first thing we're gonna do is crack an egg into a bowl. And that essentially is gonna be your little gonna get it ready to get battered over here. So we take a spoon or anything, doesn't need to be a whisk. I like to use a spoon since the only purpose of using the egg is to get it ready to be ponko. It doesn't need to be real fine. And then we're gonna just be pouring the ponko inside of this little plate right here. All right, so we got the fish nice and seasoned. We got the egg all mixed up. Pour some ponko inside of here. And that should be good enough. I like the value pack also has a little seal resealable pouch so this will last you for days. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is dip the fish fully inside of the egg, get it sticky, and then spread out the panko. We're just gonna lay it over like this, kind of move it around. You can even lift the fish up so it gets inside of those slits that we pre-cut. Do that on both sides. 
and we're good to go. I'm gonna place this back on that plate where I just got it from. Same thing with the second fish. So now they have the three fish all nice and punkled. You can even pour the rest of it on top, just like that. Just so none of this goes to waste. And there we go. What we have left to do now is fry this fish up. So let's go ahead and turn the stove on, pour enough oil in it. So now that the oil is heated up, I'm actually gonna turn this down a little bit. I've got it at um, some high heat. So I'm gonna turn it on medium and just drop the fish inside right here. And you wanna be careful because the fish is full of water and uh, water and oil do not mix, so you will get a lot of popping action right here. So you can see, really intense, dropping the fried fish inside. And I could probably put the third one in as well. Fish doesn't take a long time to cook. You could honestly leave it over for like a minute, two minutes, especially with these smaller ones. So it's been about a minute and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and flip these over now. So my fish is just about done. I went ahead and lined the plate with some paper towels just to absorb all the oil. You can see both sides pretty evenly cooked. Go ahead and drop that right there. That's all she wrote. Make sure you guys are always turning off your hot stove. That's all she wrote. So we got nice crispy fish right here. All right, so I'm here with my wife, Kayla. We're gonna try and grind some of this hallelujah that we just caught a couple days ago. And I'm gonna be using my grandma's special sauce. So this is uh, shoyu vinegar and Hawaiian chili pepper. Um, DM me on Instagram for more information on where to get that. Let's go ahead and pour this in a bowl. Nice little dipping sauce. You can see the meat, super tender, nice and clean. He's gonna get the first bite. It's really hot. How is it? Good? Mom. <laughs> Coming from someone who's super picky, she doesn't even eat onions, she doesn't eat raw fish, but I feel like she just says the fish is good because I catch it. Is it really that good? I wouldn't be eating it if it wasn't good. So I'll pull up a piece right here, you guys can see. Nice, crispy, hot really meat. Hot. All right, we're gonna finish eating this fish. Make sure you guys enter the giveaway. I'll see you guys in the next, next episode. For real kind this time, I'll see you guys in the next episode, whether that's a fishing vlog or a spear fishing vlog. I haven't been diving for like the last month. If you guys want to see more of my wife in my videos, make sure you guys leave a thumbs up. And if you guys want to see more of me, make sure you don't leave a thumbs down. <laughs>